moon. Okay? In fact, you have a much more favorable situation on Mars. Uh, in terms of a much richer resource base. You have water, you have carbon, you have nitrogen, you have much more things that you need. You have mineral ore in a sense that you do not have it on the moon. Um, the uh, prospects for agriculture on Mars are vastly superior. So the, the thing is this. Uh, one could design an orderly Mars mission plan, just as in Apollo, we didn't have a separate program to do lunar orbit space station. We, j we flew Apollo 8 into lunar orbit as a preliminary exercise of the Apollo hardware before we sent people to the moon. But we, the goal was to get to the moon, to get to the moon within a very definite time frame, and then within the context of that, certain other activities were done using uh, that hardware to gain confidence. And in this case, one could do a NEO mission or even a, a, a very robust sample return. But for instance, if you say, oh, we have to do sample return before we go to Mars, and you, within the context of the robotic program, design a, an entire special hardware set to do sample return, uh, because, of course, sample return could be done on a smaller scale than the return vehicle of a human mission. Um, but if you do that, you're inserting an addition, you're basically you're saying, you can't do that program until you do this program. And by the way, you can't do that program until you also do this program and this program. In that case, you never get there. So this is the way to do a coherent Mars program. If you want to unify the uh, sample return with the human program, just say, we're doing a human program, and before we send humans round trip, we'll send the, uh, the, the round trip spacecraft and return with a ton of samples. Um, and you'll have a much better sample return, and you won't delay the human mission at all. Let, let, let me, there's two points there. One, I agree with you fully that sample return has to be put in the context of human exploration. I, I agree with that. Uh, in terms of the moon base, I think that uh, I disagree with you in two ways. One is I think that Mars ought to be a goal, but it, it doesn't need to be the only goal. Only goal. Things. We still do telescopes. We still do other things. And I think a moon base ought to be a goal as well. I think we can do both. I think we can do a moon base, a permanent moon base. But well, after I we learn to live on Mars, we can use that as practice for going to the moon. Well, I think the, uh, <laughs> that's true. In any case, that, that could be that, that it would work out that it's easier to do Mars first, but I think it's not. And the reason I think it's not is one big fundamental advantage that the moon has over Mars in terms of trying to establish a base there first, and that is that it's a lot closer. That's, easy. So that, that's if you don't want to stay. If you want to oh. leave, the moon is more convenient. If you want to stay, Mars is much more convenient. And the reason I why we didn't stay on the moon is there was nothing there worth staying for. I think we want to go back and <laughs> forth. We don't want to, uh, at least NASA can't accept one-way missions as a Mars uh, program. I didn't say so one-way missions. You've got to be going back and forth. Long-duration missions. Yeah, well, long-duration, you still got to come back. And the moon, if something goes wrong, the moon's a lot closer. So in terms of an initial base, if, if we say, let's imagine in our lifetimes, I don't know about you, but I plan to live for quite a while longer, Robert. Uh, in our lifetimes, uh, we want to see bases on the moon and Mars. Uh, I think that should be taken as our goal. It is not an either or. I reject the view that we can't do both. We can do both. We can have bases on the moon. We can have bases on Mars. We can even keep the base in Antarctica. Why not? Uh, all good places to go. So given that, the question is, is, which do we focus on first? I think we're in agreement that a, a flight into near-Earth object uh, and a sample return are part of the steps on the way to humans. Well, the question is the moon. They're not necessary steps, but they could be done with the Mars hardware set. And <laughs> therefore, if it was deemed reasonable okay, well, to I do them. I think they're necessary I steps. I don't think you're going to establish a base on Mars without a piece of the dirt in your labs. We went Earth, to the moon without a piece of the dirt in our we labs. We weren't establishing a base. We were just walking around and coming back. We send a human exploration mission. It brings back samples. Then we go and establish uh, a base. Oh, that's a waste. I would vote <laughs> against an Apollo-like mission to Mars, where well, you just where you just go, grab rocks, plant a flag, come back, no, no. you'll end up it, it, with the same wait, wait, result Chris, that we got on Apollo, Chris, which that, is... Chris, that's a complete non sequitur. Any human Mars mission competently planned would involve at least a year to a year and a half stay on the okay. surface. But Any the Mars mission that goes w involves very substantial surface exploration. There's no such thing as a flags and footprints mission to Mars. Any Mars mission would involve 
vastly greater exploration right. than the space program has ever done in its entirety to date. But I don't want greater exploration. I want a permanent base. But well, let me just thought, let, 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 let base. Anyway, I'm going to yield because there are other people that want to ask right, questions. Okay. But the essential <laughs> argument is really over the moon base, and I think I would argue that that needs to be in our goal set as well as a Mars base. Question uh, here. I, I think Dr. Zubrin has taken the wind out of my sails, but I'm a layman, and I, I still have questions um, concerning the choices and the priorities that you place. Go to the moon first and then go to Mars, in effect, for settlement. Um, settlement. Just a as a layman, isn't it uh, less energy intensive to send uh, a rocket ship to Mars than to the moon? Because you don't, you don't need as, from what I understand, you need more fuel to go to the moon and back than you do from to Mars. Secondly, uh, Mars is, when, once you get there, it is less difficult to stay than it is on the moon. You've got a protective atmosphere, don't you? Don't you have the ability, you have, you have an atmosphere that you can make oxygen out of to breathe, which you can't on the moon, and you have the possibility of, uh, you have the protection of, of that atmosphere. So it would seem, and, and the other thing is, when you're landing on, the, on Mars, isn't it easier to land on Mars than it is to land on the moon? Don't you have more of a risk of missing the moon and going off as they were afraid of doing it during the, the Apollo program? and um, going off into space. Uh, well, well, let me address that in, in, in a more general way than just going through your specific points. There are certainly advantages of Mars and disadvantages of Mars vis-a-vis -vis the moon in terms of a site for a base. I think it's pointless to debate those advantages in detail. I think we should plan on, as a goal, have bases in both places. Then it becomes a question of which is more feasible at the start, which is easier to do at the start. I think if you look at the problem, the moon has one overwhelming advantage, overwhelming advantage, the choice for where you start, and that is that it is so close. Mars is far. Ultimately, we do want to have a base on Mars that does use, as you pointed out, the oxygen in the atmosphere and so on. Moon has, the moon has different challenges. Mars has challenges. The moon has different challenges. And the notion that a, Mars ba a moon base is a literal model for Mars base is silly. But the moon has one big, big advantage is it, that it's very close. In fact, it's faster to get to the moon than it is to Antarctica. And that's important, that's important for, uh, for testing out and safety. It's, uh, I think, and I think you, if you look within NASA, the consensus has been the moon. And that's the reason. It's not that folks in NASA don't like Mars. We love Mars. We want to go to Mars. But when you look at actually doing it, when you look at actually doing it, it's a lot easier to do it nearby first. And I, I just, I, the metaphor is setting up your tent in your backyard. It's a lot easier than setting it up in a remote desert. So I predict that the moon's going to be first. But the real philosophical point is that it is not a distinction. We should advocate as a goal permanent research bases on the moon and on Mars. Uh, I personally would be more interested in visiting the one on Mars because that's the kind of science I do. But the moon is a world with natural complexity. There's a lot of discoveries to be made there. And this is in contrast, for example, to the space station, which is not a world of natural complexity. It's a constructed environment. The space station, we can do experiments of human construction, but we can't discover new things that are unexpected, right, that are not the results of these experiments. On the moon, or Mars, we can go out and discover something that was completely unanticipated and unexpected. And that's what we saw in Apollo. And as part of Constellation, we got an email from some review committee that said, you know, one of the lessons we learned from the space station is that it was inadequately utilized because not, of, not enough advanced science planning. And I wrote back and said, well, this is a, a, a mistaken view because you're, the moon and the Mars and the space station, sorry, the moon and the space station are not similar at all. On the space station, you only get the science out that you put in, that you take with you, because there's nothing there to discover. That is not the case on the moon. On the moon, all you have to do is send somebody 
and they will discover what's there. The moon is a place of natural complexity and natural discoveries waiting to be made. 